Well, welcome to lesson two of the Spirit-Filled Life course. It is so good to have you here with me. And um, from the bottom of my heart, I pray that this material will be more than, you know, a course or a bunch of videos you watch, something you attend as part of our ministry school, but actually a, an invitation into a journey into the fullness of the Spirit of God. The world needs a Spirit-Filled church. The world needs spirit-filled Christians and the spirit-filled life is really the only life that God has for us. Literally even before recording this course I was walking around my church here just praying in the Holy Spirit filled and um, hallelujah. The way we stay full of the Holy Spirit is by staying empty, by pouring out and we're going to explore really just systematically the truth of the baptism, the fullness, the life of the Spirit in this course. What I want to do today in lesson number two is to talk with you and to examine what it actually means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now again, just for the sake of clarity, uh, we could use the term baptism in the Spirit, which I would, I would see as being synonymous with filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, empowered with the Holy Spirit. We could use different words like that. I'm going to use the, the biblical term baptized in the Holy Spirit. In John 1 uh, verse 33, John the Baptist points to Jesus and says, this is he who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. John said he baptizes in the Holy Spirit and fire. And I am baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. I want you to be and you to spend your life giving that experience away to others. You know, this is so important that we have this experience. Many years ago, I was speaking in a, in a home fellowship in uh, Pennsylvania, near Scranton, Pennsylvania. And a lady came, a lady in her, I want to say probably mid-70s. And um, she was the wife of a teacher in a, I believe it was a Baptist seminary in that area. And she'd been taught against these things. She'd been taught erroneously that, uh, you know, God had given these things in the first century, but that they, God no longer um, gave, you know, the gifts of the Spirit, the baptism of the Spirit, gift of tongues, prophecy, those things. That is a demonic teaching. There's nothing in the Bible that says that whatsoever. But uh, she came to this meeting and then she heard people speak in tongues and uh, she got up and decided, I'm just going to leave. And she's driving home. And as she drove home, God spoke to her and said, turn around, go back and listen. And it was so dramatic in her that she, she obeyed God. She came, she turned around, she came back and uh, she was filled with the spirit that night. And yet... It was glorious to see this, this lady um, speaking in tongues for the first time in her life. And yet there were tears rolling down her face. And she came to me at the end and she said, I could have had this experience 50 years ago. I've missed out on 50 years of living the life God wanted me to live. Why? Because of poor doctrine, poor teaching. And that's why it's vital that we have good teaching, that we have biblical teaching, not historical teaching, that you honor the church background maybe you came from, but that you submit its teaching to the teaching of thus says the Lord, to the teaching of it is written, to the teaching of the Bible, to the teaching of the Word of God. Really important thing. So what is the baptism in the Spirit? The baptism in the Spirit is an experience. I mean, literally, it would mean it's like being baptized in water. John the Baptist came and he took people and he baptized them in water. Now, again, the word baptism comes from the Greek word baptismo. It means to be fully immersed. It doesn't mean a little sprinkling on the head. Sorry, Catholics and Episcopalians, but it means full immersion. And John came and John would take people in the River Jordan and baptize them, plunge them, immerse them into a, a river of dirty water, if you will, and baptize them in water. And then when Jesus came, John baptizes Jesus, but then Jesus is also filled with the Spirit. And then John the Baptist says of Jesus, this is he, not only this is he who's been filled with the Spirit, but this is he who baptizes in the Spirit. So Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit and power. That's part of Jesus's role in ministry. We don't baptize people in the Holy Spirit. Jesus baptizes people in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. What does it mean to be baptized? Imagine I had a cup here. I have a cup here. Imagine if I baptize this cup in a river. 
I plunge it, I fully immerse it in a river. It comes out of the river filled with the element it was baptized into. So when it's baptized in a river of water, it comes out filled with water. When we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. So to be baptized is, to be baptized is really like an initial God plunging and filling you to overflowing with his spirit. It's an initial filling of the spirit, but there's also ongoing fillings of the Holy Spirit. Now I have in my notes, do all Christians have this experience? I would answer that all Christians can have this experience. I think many Christians have this experience without even knowing they have it. I think at times though, people, many Christians do not have this experience. And I can show you that biblically. All throughout the book of Acts, you'll see people who've come into a born again experience and yet not have this fullness of the spirit experience. In Acts 18, Paul comes to Ephesus and he finds believers and he says to them, did you receive the spirit when you believed? And they said, well, we, we haven't heard about the filling of the spirit. Paul lays hands on them and they begin prophesying and speaking in tongues. In um, the conversion of Paul or Saul as he was, Saul meets Jesus and he encounters Jesus. Three days later, Ananias comes to see him and Ananias calls him Brother Saul. You're my brother. He says, I've come to pray with you that your blindness would go, your eyes would be opened, oh, and that you would be filled with the Holy Spirit. He was his brother in Christ, but he hadn't yet been filled with the Spirit. Um, you know, again and again and again, Philip goes down to Samaria. What does he do? He preaches Christ. And people believe and are converted and are born again, if you will, in Samaria through the preaching of Philip the evangelist. And then the apostles come down and lay hands on the new believers, not that they would be born again, but that they might be filled with the Spirit. Now, there's obviously a time gap between Philip coming to preach Christ, the word getting back to the apostles, and the apostles praying that they'd be filled with the Spirit. So I would actually say that uh, in Acts 20, Jesus breathes on the apostles and says, receive the Holy Spirit. But then he says, wait till you be endured with power from on high. So I would personally say the apostles were born again uh, before that Pentecost experience. You could argue with me maybe in that. But for many, many people, you know, that was my experience. I came to the Lord in, on July the 14th, 1984, in a Billy Graham service in Liverpool in the UK, and um, gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, about six months later, I begin, you know, noticing that people had experiences of the Holy Spirit that I didn't have, speaking in tongues, prophecy, things like that. And uh, somebody gave me a book, uh, Run Baby Run, the biography of Nicky Cruz, the young man who was converted in The Cross and the Switchblade. A great book. Haven't read it for many years, but I'd encourage you to read it. And if I remember correctly, as part of this book, again, I'm, I'm a young man now, I'm 14, 15, I've been a Christian for six, eight months maybe, and I begin reading this book. And as I'm reading the book, Nicky Cruz, um, there's a time in his life where he's a Bible school student, at a, I believe in Assemblies of God Bible, uh, college, and he talks about going into a church, getting on his knees, and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he talks about being filled and literally like liquid honey pouring through him, and oil and power and glory, and then beginning to speak in tongues. And I remember as a young man reading that, and I was like, I want that experience. I got to have that experience. And I was reading this book um, during one of my school vacations, like at 3 a.m. in the morning. So I decided I wasn't going to sleep till I had that experience. And I got up at 3 a.m., took my dog for a walk into the fields behind my house in Cheshire. And I, you know, somewhere where I could really pray and make a bunch of noise. And um, I began praying, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. God, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. And nothing happened. So I shouted a little louder and nothing happened. I shouted a little louder. Nothing happened. I shouted for an hour, God, fill me, please fill me, please fill me. I'll try my best if you'll fill me up. Nothing happened. I walked home depressed, discouraged. You know, it was like, I was kind of like grumpy in my heart going, God, I'm not, I'm not as, uh, you don't love me as much as you love Nikki Cruz. And I was pretty, I just was sick of the whole thing. 
Two or three days later, I think two or three days, could have been a week later, I can't even remember really, but it was really soon, a matter of days later, I woke up in my bedroom one morning, sun just coming up, half asleep, half awake, and I was suddenly aware somebody in the room was speaking in tongues, and then I was aware it was me, and it was, there was no liquid fire, honey, oil, tingles, angels, it wasn't dramatic, it was, I don't want to say boring, but it was, it was just normal. And I was just, I was speaking in tongues. 